Chapter 4 Test Review. Those of you that are watching the video at home, you're probably going to want to pause this because I'm going to go relatively fast through the first several slides. Also, if I begin coughing, I'm sorry. Someone in my fifth period sprayed something awful, and all of us are coughing. So I do apologize prior now if I do begin coughing. So uh, the first test objective is going to be comparing frequency and wavelength, and this is what this is. So frequency, basic definition, the number of waves that pass a given point in a given time. Now, if we're talking about one second. Now, we've got to remember, how fast are these things traveling? The speed of light, which is numerically 3 times 10 to the 8th, which is 300 million. So in one second, there's going to be a lot of waves passing, okay? So yes, we can give it in hertz because one second is, 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 a, is a good idea with these because they're traveling so fast. Uh, the symbol is nu, uh, and if you'll notice the blue wave line that I have written below frequency, that is a wave, uh, a so many of those wave tops will pass in just in one second. Wavelength, the symbol is lambda. Uh, the distance between two corresponding points on a wave or a crest. Uh, I want to add something to this real quick, and I, and I forgot to do this, so just kind of follow along with me. The unit for this is seconds to the negative 1, or what does that transpond to? Very good, 1 over S. And what will the unit for wavelength be? Meters. Okay, Meters is the unit. So again, uh, and I told you amplitude, and I kind of talked about this to the class. Uh, every wave has a midpoint line, which is this dotted line right here. And the amplitude is the distance from the midline to the top, which is this one, or the midline to the bottom, which is this one. And we know that every top of the wave is called a what? And the bottom is called a trough. Very good. So that is wavelength and frequency. Moving on. <clears throat> this is something you better put a star beside. You need to know this. Frequency and wavelength are indirectly related, which means what? One goes up, the other goes. So as, as closer and closer and closer this wavelength gets as it goes from wave A to wave B, what happens to the frequency? It increases, right? So as that distance gets closer and closer and closer, that frequency is going to go up and up and up. But always remember, and I told you to remember this since day one, what are all waves traveling at? Same. Same speed, which is the speed of light. And again, here it is numerically, 3.0 times 10 to the 8th, which is 300 million. Okay, 300 million is that value. Next, this is also something important. I told you there's no math involved in the test, and there's not any, but there is relationships involved based on the math equations, and these are the only two equations that we came up with. Uh, this first one is C equals lambda nu. When we say that the speed of light is constant, that means that C will do what? Same. Never change. It'll always be the same. So wavelength times frequency. Remember how we said earlier that wavelength, as one increases, the other one must do what? So when you multiply these two numbers together, they must always equal... 300 million. So if, if my wavelength gets shorter, if the distance gets closer, that frequency must increase to counteract that other value decreasing. Now, if you want to look at it in terms of the triangle, so if you actually had to solve a math equation, this is what you could plug it into. So let's just hypothetically say, if I wanted to know what is the wavelength of a, uh, of a wave, mathematically, what would I do? Divide constant by the frequency. Not constant, but it is... C is speed of light. So I would cover up lambda, and it will be C over nu, right? That's what you do. What if I wanted to know the frequency? C divided by lambda. Very good. So it, you can use this triangle uh, just like that. So this is the other one. This is energy equals H times nu. Now, Planck's constant is in this one. And again, you don't have to know this one, but it was 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds and that's the numerical value for Planck's constant again you do not have to know that but just to kind of show you what it is again this red part you need to know that as well I put a big star beside that energy and frequency are directly related and remember how if I said I put you in the uh, in the Gulf of Mexico in a category 5 hurricane how often would waves hit you every half second how much energy have they be carrying a lot okay so that's kind of what I want you to get and that's what this right here is the higher the frequency which is this is what this means the higher the frequency excuse me 
the more the energy. It was what we're getting at there. So again, no math. Just make sure you understand these concepts. Okay. Next. Now, I know this is a lot. Guys, of you on the video, pause this and look at this. All this is telling you is how the electromagnetic spectrum, which is exactly what it says right here, is set up. You could actually find this in a book. So the electromagnetic spectrum is all this is is light and waves. And if you'll notice over here on the left-hand side, it starts with the lowest energy and frequency. And as you go left to right, what happens? Your wavelength gets shorter. And what happens to your energy and your frequency? It increases. You'll notice if you go long waves to TV radio to micro to infrared. Now, what does infra mean? Below. Below. Infra is below. You may want to write that down. Infra equals below. So infrared means below red. Notice what happens. When you, when you get into visible light, what is the first thing before red, infrared? It is red. Okay, that's why I have it pointed there. Then you have visible light. This is the only part that our eyes can see. Roy G. Biv, those are the colors. And then what does ultra mean? Above. That's what ultra means. So ultraviolet means... Above violet. above violet so it's going to have a little bit more energy can the color violet give you tan skin yes. no. no but can ultraviolet yes it's got a little bit more energy then we have x-rays and we have gamma rays and gamma rays are the highest energy and the highest frequency and the low and the shortest wavelength okay that's that one next a quantum a quantum is an amount of energy and i put a numerical measurement and we can actually get the number of how much energy is in that is in the quantum so it's a minimum amount of energy that must be gained or lost to move energy levels do you remember whenever I'm gonna insert this I'm going to insert a page insert blank after current when we had this diagram okay and I had an electron right here how do we get that electron to jump out there okay what we had to do is we had to shoot it with some energy Okay, so what happens is when you shoot, when you hit it with a photon, okay, that electron's going to jump. Well, what happens when I had this electron out here and it wanted to go back down? What did it have to do? Okay, it had to give off some energy. Okay, it had to give off that same amount. So it's a specific amount, and that's kind of what this was. Going back to this real quick. So quantum is, again, I kind of referred to that as the pain of the paintball. And to go from ground to excited. You need to know both of these. I'm going to ask you one or the other. If to go up an energy level, it's called absorption. When you go down an energy level, it's called... Some of you missed this. I was grading your labs. It was asking you, how was color given off? How was it giving you color? That's not what I want to do. Which one emitted energy? Okay. So it emitted it right here. So what happened to your energy? You lost energy. So if it goes down, you lose energy. Some of you were putting gaining energy. The way it gives off light is by giving off that energy. That's how it works. Okay, so again, just make sure you kind of understand this slide. Going past this. Now a photon. What is inside of a photon? A quantum. And photon is that ball of light. It's a packet of light carrying a quantum of energy and again I put this in here just to kind of make a point of emphasis it is massless so this is one of Einstein's little weird things that he came up with okay so this is how light travels photoelectric effect okay the photoelectric effect what happens here is you have kind of this encasing if you'll notice it right here and in this casing we have a piece of iron metal so what happens is when we hit that piece of iron metal with a light or a photon, if it has just enough quantum or just enough quanta, just enough energy, what happens is we can knock these electrons off. Okay? Well, when you knock these electrons off, there's something on the other side that's going to catch it. Well, what is electricity? What's the basic definition of electricity? The flow of electrons. Well, when you have that electron jump across those pieces of metal, what's it going to do down this wire? It's going to travel down this wire, and then what's it going to get to? The light bulb. What's going to happen to that light bulb? 
it's going to light up. So if you hit it with just enough light energy, just enough quantum inside that photon, you can make those electrons jump off. Now, I've labeled this an anode. Uh, where the iron is, and we'll get into this in the next few chapters. But just for now, an anode is something that is negative, and I've labeled where the electrons go the cathode because that's where positive ions go. Now, or that's what the positive ion is. What is the charge of an electron? Negative. What are negatives attracted to positives or negatives attracted to negatives? Negatives are attracted to positives. So does it make sense why the electron would go to the things that is positive? That's why it jumps across, and that's why it's called the cathode. And again, that is the photoelectric effect. Guys, I'm going to have to go ahead and move on from this. I'll come back if I have enough time. Okay. Line emission spectrum. The line emission spectrum. Now, this is exactly what we did with that little lab demo with the excited atoms the other day. We took a piece of hydrogen gas. We actually had six other gases that we did. And when you looked at that color, it showed up a color that your eyes could see. But then when you looked in those 3D glasses, was it the same color? Nope. No. What happened to the color that you saw with your naked eye? It broke into all the different Exactly. It separated into every color. Did every gas have the same lines? Okay. No, they did not. So what that allows us to do is have a spectrum. This is called the line emission spectrum. When gases give off certain colors through a prism. So what I have here is I have hydrogen gas. Okay, and this is the exact one we did. And what color did it show up? Oh, it was that pink color, right? And then when we put it through a prism, how many colors did you see? Four. four. Okay. You saw four different colors. So again, that's just an easy way to remember. This is the hydrogen line emission spectrum. We'll get into that later. Hydrogen always has a twin. We'll get into that later. Bohr, what did he say they traveled in? Orbits. Bohr said that he was boring. Why do you think there's a big yellow line through this? It's wrong. It is incorrect. That's why I drew it like that. He said they were locked in the past called orbits, like planets, and he is wrong. Okay. Now, he said that they could jump orbits, but they had to go round in, the, in, in an orbit. So we know excuse me, that this is wrong. So Bohr said they were orbits. He said they were locked, but they could jump up and down. But they, once they got there, they had to stay in it. Um, they moved like planets. And then, uh, again, he was wrong. Let me pause this. Here's your three, three guys. Crazy last names. Came up with some crazy things. Whenever we were finished talking, remember, we said light traveled like waves. Then we said it traveled like what? Particles. But then what did these guys say it traveled like? Both, which is weird. Imagine shooting a paintball at somebody and it literally going up and down kind of like a wave. Weird, weird stuff. So De Broly, he was the first guy that come out and said, it doesn't necessarily travel like waves. And again, this is kind of confusing. It really technically travels like both. And here's, let me tell you why I wrote waves. An electron is what? It's like a little paintball. It's a piece of matter. It's that marble. Remember the video we watched? Okay, it's just like that. So it's an electron that's like a marble okay, that travels in a wave fashion. So again, it's like that paintball going up and down like a wave. And that was De Broly. Heisenberg came out with his uncertainty principle. Okay, you may want to write that by Heisenberg. Uncertainty principle. So you don't know where it is or how fast it's going. Okay, so one more time, Heisenberg, the uncertainty principle, cannot know the position or velocity of an electron in time. And then Schrodinger, remember those crazy, ugly, weird, strange math equation? So he actually proved it mathematically. And you do have to do one of his equations on the test, by the way. I'm kidding. It was a joke. <laughs> that was a joke. I was kidding. Do you honestly think I would make y'all do those equations? Hey, you don't give me enough credit. Y'all don't. I'm not that evil. I'm not that evil. You're right, that. We will get to some math, but it's not that crazy. Now, I, and I should have wrote this. Before you write anything down, I want you to write something above this. Write down um, quantum numbers. These things, these four things right here. 
These four are the quantum numbers. And what do the quantum numbers tell you? It's Very good. What's address? The, quantum, I mean the, electron. the electron's address. Okay. Now, we never got into this. We never put values with the electron. And here's why I never did it. And, and I finally just come to the conclusion I'm not going to make you guys do it. Um, I'm not teaching it in AP. And so if it's not going to be taught on the AP exam, I really don't want to waste your time. Now, when you get to college, that may be something I'm going to let your professor teach you. But I just I don't want to waste the time in here on it. Yeah, no, right. This you have to know what these are, but I'm actually talking about assigning them because we never assigned an electron an address. We just talked about how we would do it, and these are the four. Okay, so remember, it's Pam's quantum numbers. So, principle. What does the principle tell you? The period. Nah, don't use period because you won't. The period will not be the answer on the test. It is the energy level. You need to know that. Say it again. Energy. It's level. Energy level. That's okay. Energy level. So principle is the energy level. Remember, where do you always start? The lowest. The lowest and what's the lowest one? 1S. The 1S is always the lowest. And what element is the 1S1? Hydrogen. And then the next one is... Helium. Always start with those two. Next, the angular is the shape. Okay? It is the shape. The S block was what shape? Spherical. The P block was a? Dumbbell. Dumbbell. D block was? Double dumbbells. And F block, we forgot about it. Okay? We weren't going to go there. So, but the angular is the L. Magnetic. Remember, we kind of called this the motel. Why do we call this the motel? Because it's the room. It's where the rooms are. The magnetic is the motel, it's where the rooms. And what I have is the orientation, it's the direction. Remember, it's the axis. Let me come over here and write this down. It's either going to be on the X, it's either going to be on the Y, or it's going to be on the Z axis. So it's the actual orbital that it's in. How many rooms did the S block have? How many orbitals? S block. One orbital. How many orbitals did the P block have? Three orbitals. Okay, we had three lines. How many did the D block have? Five. Five. Very good. So if you even want to add that in, if you have any space out there. So the S had one. The P had three. The D had five. And you, we can talk about the F. How many? Seven. Very good. Seven orbitals. And then finally, the spin. Only two ways it could spin. It could spin up or it could spin down. That is it. So that is the quantum numbers. And again, we never got into talking about the actual address. That is not something that's a part of this curriculum. We don't have to assign quantum numbers. Okay? And that you can't have the same address. So the, all four quantum numbers will be different. I may show you one after the test one day, just kind of show you what it would look like. But other than that, we're not going to talk about them. Okay? Shapes. Okay? Shapes. One possible shape for the S. And it's spherical. Yeah, you need to write this down. Guys, if we do not finish this day, we still got 15 minutes. Yeah, we do. We're on club day. I watch is slow again. My watch is slow. Okay. So three, I would definitely write this down. So whatever you don't get to today, I would definitely... Um, go home and watch this tonight. You guys are ahead of everybody else. Nobody else has seen this today. Okay, so y'all may have 10, 15 minutes worth of watching. They'll have an hour worth of watching. Okay. So magnetic, again, one possible shape is spherical. What did we say the, sh the shape for P was? Very good. The dumbbell or the peanut looking thing. Okay. So it depends on which axis it's on, remember? So if you'll notice, the x-axis was negative 1. The y-axis was 0. The z-axis was positive 1. It's kind of how we look at it. And again, if you want to keep writing, about a good there? Okay. Yes. Yeah, keep them. 
Yeah, and guys, don't forget to study. And again, I'll try to finish this out and work on some things. If you have any questions, come see me tomorrow morning before school. I'll be here at 7 o'clock. If you want to come in, I'll review with you. I'll even get up here and work problems if you want to come. So come in if you have any questions. Okay, so tomorrow the test is just on the medical. No math, right? No, I mean, it's all of everything I've covered. And then it's also like do the orbital diagram, like with the arrows. Guys, there's, there's two arrow problems. There's three or four of the superscripts, the electron configuration, and then there's two um, noble gas. Okay. So sphere, dumbbell, five shapes. Guys, here's the thing. If you still have your paper out, I would definitely write this down. If not, you need to go back in the video and you need to watch this. Okay. I'm going to pause the video right here, and I'm going to pick this up. Seventh period. Uh, this is how many electrons are in each energy level. Because you need to remember that N equals the period. Not, not excuse me, not the period. N is the principle, which equals the energy level. Because you're going to need to know this tomorrow, and you're going to really wish you would have paid attention. So when N equals one, guys, please listen. I'm going to explain this while you're in here. When N equals one. We're only talking about what? Period. The first period. There are two electrons total in the first period. When N equals 2, what are we talking about? The, the entire second row. So there's L, I, and B, E, which is how many? 2. And then B, C, N, O, F, and N, E. So how many total there? Eight. So that's 2 plus 6 is 8. When N equals 3, so we've got the Na and Mg, which is 2. We've got all of 3P. Well, where does the rest of the other ones come from? Very good. you got to have the D block. And then what about when N equals 4? Where do those come from? The F block. you got to add the 14 from the F block. 